In this lecture, we're going to cover how to set positions for the joints before implementing advanced skeleton for rigging your custom mesh character. First, let's duplicate the mesh set and hide the original since we will be cutting and slicing the duplicated mesh. Unpair the individual meshes from the groups since you're going to use it only for creating the proxy mesh. Hide the original ones and locate the poly mesh and position it back to the center origin. Combine the head and the body since we won't need them to be individual meshes. Just in case, we will change the name of the mesh. This isn't essential, but can help differentiate your duplicated mesh from your original. Scale is very important to keep in mind. We'll create a simple box to check the height. The box helps to double check the units in your settings visually. We'll connect vertices around the sections of the mesh where we are planning to slice up the mesh to build the proxy. This helps to get a cleaner separation. We'll turn off symmetry so that we can visually see the difference before and after we start slicing up the character mesh for proxy. Start selecting the faces of the mesh. Press Ctrl E to merge to center. Continue the same process of selecting the faces, moving down the ankle and shoe areas of the character. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. They offer a top-ranked game design curriculum online. All courses are taught by industry veterans with experience from studios such as Disney, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Google, and more. Learn the entire process of animation and motion capture using Autodesk Maya and Blender's Grease Pencil by following the methods used to create industry-quality professional animation. The full animation workflow is explained in detail in their masterclass courses. Extensive character rigging courses teach the process of how to custom rig characters for all of your project needs. Learn professional workflows such as 3D character modeling, utilizing industry standard software such as ZBrush, Autodesk Maya, and Substance Painter. The entire character design workflow is covered from start to finish in their masterclass offerings. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. For the foot, select the faces where the foot roll will be applied. Detach the mesh. We'll adjust some of the mesh topology to separate the legs from the pelvis region. Work through the character's pelvis, lower, mid, and upper spine following the same process. The goal is to visually start to split up the character where the joints will be placed for the proxy. Continue the process for the arms and target where the elbows will bend in the character when posed. Do the same for the wrists and the hands. Move along to the upper arm and shoulder region splitting the mesh. Follow the same procedure to split up the fingers on the hand. Target where the joints will be placed in the fingers and the bend positions for each finger. Start to split up the mesh for the collar, neck, and head regions. We'll adjust the mesh later to polish the finger regions to add some extra detail so that when posed, they will deform more cleanly. Continue to section off the fingers and segment them targeting the positions where the finger controllers will bend when posed. The finger can be a bit tedious to segment, but keep in mind that the extra effort is worth it as animation and posing of fingers are reliant on this planning. It can take some extra details in planning to get good deformation on the fingers with character rigs. Once the mesh has been segmented, we'll make the mesh proxy and scale x-1 since fit mode is based on the right side of the mesh. To be safe, we'll freeze transformations to prep for the next steps of the rigging process. Right click and browse to assign a new material to the proxy. Change the color of the proxy mesh so that you can visually see the proxy. Create a new layer and rename the layer as Proxy Mesh. As we discussed in the previous lecture, we'll add some additional segments to the fingers for extra polish. For this process, remember to turn on symmetry. Press Shift-Alt-D to delete history. In the outliner, remove meshes under the Geo group before applying Advanced Skeleton. Also be sure to delete any empty groups. Note that if you have any groups under the Geo group, the create process will not run correctly. 
it's not essential to have the proxy mesh inside the geo group. Let's run the check on the body. Inside the advanced skeleton GUI, press the model check button to check the symmetry. We can see that there are some vertices that are not symmetrical. We can see a notification in the editor that states model is symmetrized. Next we'll run the check on the helmet. We get the notification that there are some vertices that need to be adjusted. We'll take a closer look at the helmet mesh and search for what is causing the error. Looking at the UV editor can help visually identify where the fix is needed. There's a small hole in the mesh that was missed during the retopo stage that will need some adjusting. We'll continue to double check the helmet mesh for any other sections that need to be corrected in the helmet and make the necessary adjustments. Let's check the star mesh emblem of the character. We also get a notification that some adjustments are necessary for symmetry. We'll adjust some of the geometry to get it symmetrical and run the check once more. Continue to run the check, and if you notice that auto symmetrize is not working, you may have to do the adjustments by hand to get everything lined up. Scaling down of Y and Z along with snapping to center along the X axis were necessary to fix the symmetry in this case. Run the check once more until you get the confirmation notification in the editor. Adjusting the symmetry can take time, but it's essential to get a clean rig that deforms properly for posing and animation. Once everything has been checked, you want to double check all the segments throughout the mesh and see if there are any more segments that should be added for polish. Next, let's make a new layer and add the selected object. Name the layer to your liking. Hide the original mesh and only have the proxy mesh showing in the layers we have created. Next, we'll browse inside the advanced skeleton GUI under body and fit and press the import button next to the biped dropdown. Once the rig is generated, select the circle controller and scale it up. Try to match the height of the shoulders of the character as you scale the rig controllers up in the scene. Check the side view as well as you are placing the rig. Let's take a closer look at the shoulder area of the joint and the mesh. While pressing the V key, move the shoulder position. Make the necessary adjustments from the side view as well during the placement process. Start to align the leg joints with the mesh. While adjusting the spine joints, you can press D so that the spine joints will move independently, retaining the placement of the joints above it in the upper torso and shoulder regions. Follow the same process to place the foot joints. Adjust the knee joints while adjusting the foot joints so that the alignment is natural for posing and movements. Align the joints inside the toe regions of the foot. We'll continue to adjust the joints and the upper torso and the shoulder areas of the rig. We'll work inside out and move along the shoulder to the upper and lower arm and adjust the elbow between these two joints. Adjust the wrist and start to align the fingers starting with the thumb and then start to move to each individual finger adjusting each one. You can try to eyeball the alignment based on the segments of the mesh that we created previously. Next, we'll start to align the neck and where it connects to the upper torso. Working from the side view can help center these joints as you make the adjustments. As you work your way to the top, consider making the head bone vertical. This character doesn't have a jaw or eyeballs, so we can place them roughly where they would be on a normal character. Next, we'll create a straight line to fix the position of the elbow. Select the arm joints and align them along the line to get everything in a straight line which will help align the elbow. Try to maintain the arms and the legs to be as straight as possible from the front view. We'll follow the same workflow for the leg to align the joints and get the knee aligned. Check the side view alignment as well once you have made your placements from the front view. Browse to shading x-ray joints to check the mesh and the joints visually together. Remember to save your work after fit mode setup is done just in case you need to revert back to this file. Change the arm to IK so that you can verify the pole vector position.
You'll also want to be sure that you have the root controller visible. Also have the scapula controllers visible. Browse to deform option 2, cage, create, inside the advanced skeleton GUI. Press the create groin locators button. This will allow you to change the shape of the pelvis area. Next press the adjust groin area button. Note that this method is one method to accomplish this, however using the component editor is also an option. When you are finished making your adjustments, push the copy weights button, which will skin weight the character automatically. Well that about wraps up this video. Are you utilizing advanced skeleton rigs in your Unreal projects? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect!